Our current exhibition features selections from the university's permanent art collection. Although there are examples of paintings and sculptures on display, such as works by Grace Hardigan and Ed Clark, as well as Luke Shaw, Charles Austin, and Joseph St. Lawrence, the exhibition has a special emphasis on works on paper and mixed media. Here, for example, we have a work by Benny Andrews entitled Black Woman, which the artist crafted in 1970. It's a collage of cloth and oil on canvas, which Andrews adhered to pulp board and framed within a wooden shadow box that he painted black. We positioned the Andrews next to another mixed-media collage composed by Jack White. White created the piece in 1984 and it's taken from his Kirk Park series. The work is acrylic on wood. Both collages make interesting use of paint and wood to three-dimensionalize a traditionally two-dimensional approach to art meant to hang on a wall. Both Andrews and White also skillfully combine techniques in both craft and painting to create their works. These are examples of Morgan's collection. Morgan's Museum houses the university's teaching collection, so pieces for this exhibition were specifically chosen to allow visitors, particularly students and professors, opportunities to view and contextualize various works in juxtaposition with one another, as the Andrews and White pieces demonstrate. For example, we have on display Buford Delaney's portrait of a boy and Mary Cassatt's Jeanette, both of which are drawings of roughly similar sizes that demonstrate each artist's technique in working with paper and other dry materials. And looking past the surface of each work, the distinctiveness of the artist's hands and aesthetic intent becomes more evident. Delaney gives more detail to his drawing, with special attention paid to the subtle shades and shadows of the subject's textures, his skin, his hair, and clothing. Creases in the tie and jacket are made more realistic through the artist's use of tones and shadows. The textures of the boy, boy's hair, for example, is also convincingly real. It has sheen and waviness through Delaney's understanding of visual illusion and manipulation of materials. Cassatt's drawing, however, gives considerably less detail and is minimalist in its impressionist intent. While Delaney fills his subject with color, Cassatt uses color sparingly on the paper to only suggest tones and textures. One might assume Cassatt's drawing was a study or a way of capturing impressions of an image that could be used for a later work. In the gallery adjacent to the two drawings is another work by Delaney entitled Autumn that is quite different from the artist's portrait of a boy. Autumn is a large-scale, non-figurative oil on canvas that captures abstractions of color that are more like impressions left on the artist's mind, which he translated expressively to canvas. While Portrait of a Boy is meant to be representational, Autumn is one of Delaney's more abstract and gestural works. The juxtaposition of these two Delaney pieces allows students to study two extremely different works by a single artist that can be contextualized more readily, both in terms of their art historical genres and techniques. And there are works on display by Jacob Lawrence, Bill Williams, Charles Austin, Mel Edwards, and Grace Hardigan, um, whom we mentioned before. We also included sculptures by Elizabeth Catlett. Here we have a Luke Shaw alongside a Charles Austin painting. And right in the center of this image, we have a sculpture by uh, Joseph St. Lawrence. And here we have two Elizabeth Catlett sculptures with an Ed Clark painting in uh, the center. This is an oil painting by uh, Louise Herman, and it's entitled Man in Native Dress. Next to it, we have a serograph by Faith Ringgold entitled Mama Can Sing. Here we have a Bill Williams acrylic on paper entitled Study of Overkill alongside Grace Hardigan's Greek facade. In this photo we have a Joseph St. Lawrence sculpture. Alongside it we have three drawings or works on paper by Mel Edwards who himself is a sculptor. Works by Edwards are drawings of one of his first large-scale sculptures entitled homage to Billie Holiday and the Young Ones of Soweto. Here we have a photograph of the completed um, sculptural installation which is here on Morgan's campus. The installation was completed during the mid-1970s with materials donated by Baltimore's Bethlehem Steel. The centerpiece of the current exhibition is an installation by contemporary artist Russell Murray entitled Prayerscape. To learn more about the installation we invite you to listen to part two of this presentation.
And also feel free to stop by the James E. Lewis Museum of Art here on the campus of Morgan State University. We're open Tuesday through Sunday and are located in, in the Murphy Fine Arts Center at 2201 Oregon Drive on Morgan State's campus in Baltimore, Maryland. For more information about the museum, please visit our website at www.jelma.org. Until next time, I'm Aaron Bryant, curator for the James E. Lewis Museum of Art.